Hey, physics fam, let's look further into electricity. We're going to be focusing on four things today. Current, voltage, resistance, and power. So first of all, let's talk about what circuits are, though, so we can include these four topics. An electric circuit is basically like this little picture shows. You have a battery. We know that's a positive and negative end, which creates an electric potential difference. That voltage then pushes electricity through and around the circuit. As long as there's a potential difference, electricity will flow. Notice there's a switch here. We'll talk about that in a few seconds, but a switch can break the circuit so that electricity can't flow through. Circuits here can be drawn in a schematic way that's a lot easier than being just an artist. So this would be considered the battery, and you can see up here that that's the symbol for a battery. In this case, one short line and one long line is one battery. So since you have three batteries, we represent that with three short and long lines. Now, the lamps or the light bulbs are pulling a load from the electrical circuit. So they are slowing down electricity slightly so they can be noted as a resistor. And a resistor has the symbol like this. Now, even though these uh, lines don't say anything extra on them, these are your connecting wires for the closed circuit so that electricity can flow in a big loop. These switches, though they're not drawn in this circuit right here, the switch is open right here and means it cuts electricity. So that would be like flicking a switch off. If you close the switch, electricity keeps flowing through. Now, circuits can be two types. Uh, there can be alternating current AC. We saw a video talking about that. Remember, the electrons don't actually flow. They vibrate back and forth, back and forth. That is the type of electricity we have coming to our homes. Direct current, or DC, is what we would have for a battery, say in a toy. That would be where your electrons would flow from the negative to the positive end in a continuous loop. Again, the reason it does that is because of the potential difference of the positive and negative end. So we'll be focusing on DC circuits in class because we'll be doing circuit boards being powered by a battery. All right, so first things first is an electric current, which is noted by the letter I. Current is just the rate at which the charge is going through a wire, so how fast the charge is. You can find current by taking the charge divided by the time it takes. Current is measured in amperes, which we shorten as amps. It's actually a derived term of coulombs per second, so you can just use capital A if you'd like to. Voltage, we already know a little bit about. Voltage is the idea from high to low potential energy, something like a positive charge would want to travel to the other side. If we took those same plates, but this time connected with a wire in between it, we would have a flow of charge. So the positives would want to be towards the negatives, or the negatives would want to come towards the positives, either way, you'd have a high and low potential energy. That potential difference would create a flow. If there is no potential difference between the two plates, then there would be no charge flow, which means there'd be no current. All right. In a battery, we know that the positive and negative end of a battery create that electric potential difference. So technically, it's like pumping the charges from the negative terminal all the way to the positive terminal, so those electrons flow. And we do a continuous loop. You have to have a difference in voltage, though, or electric potential difference, in order to uh, have a flow of charge. Volt sources, for what we're going to use, we're going to focus on batteries. Though generators, if you had a diesel generator, that works. You can pull it and rev it up like a lawnmower, and then it can create electricity. In our homes, we have 120 volt outlets. So when you plug in a lamp or a vacuum cleaner or whatever, it is using 120 volts. Remember, volts are like water. If you have a pipe with water that is level, there's no difference in potential energy on either end. Water won't flow. But if you have it hiked up at one end with high potential energy and lower at low potential energy at the other side, obviously the water is going to flow to the lower energy. It's the same with electricity. 
Resistance is something that's going to slow down the flow of the current. So even though you have electric potential difference and that's going to move your charge across, resistance is going to slow that movement down. Here's a picture of resistor like we'll use in our circuit boards. They're made of different types of metals that might not be as good of conductors, and therefore uh, they're going to slow down the electrical flow and alter a few things, maybe the light bulb brightness, etc. All right. If we take this metaphor of water once more, if this is a hydrant with a nozzle, and as you push down, water is going to come out. Pushing down is going to be your voltage. So the pressure pushing on the water is your voltage. Now the little nozzle and big nozzle show you the resistance, how easy it is for the current to flow. So the bigger the nozzle, the less resistance there is. So that's your nozzle width. And therefore, the amount of water coming out would be like your current. The more water, the more current, the more charge flowing through. So voltage and resistance work against each other, and current gets caught in the middle. For resistance, in order to increase it to slow down a charge, you either need a wire that is longer in length, you need higher temperatures, which creates greater kinetic energy, which means that it'll be harder for electricity to flow, or you need a thinner wire, a smaller cross-section. If you want to reduce or decrease resistance, meaning the current can flow faster, you got to have shorter wires, cooler temperature, or a thicker wire to make more room for that charge to go through. Resistance is measured in ohms, which is noted by the Greek letter omega. So an ohm is how you say it. So if a device has 5 ohms of resistance, we would write it as the 5 omega or the 5 upside down horseshoe. Ohm's law relates actually voltage, current, and resistance. We'll get into that more in the next lecture, but we'll have to figure out how all these guys affect each other. And Ohm's law does that mathematically. Power is the last thing. We already know that power is work divided by time and the power is measured in watts. Well, for electrical energy, it's just the rate at which the energy is supplied to a circuit or how much is used by a load. For example, a light bulb or a vacuum cleaner. Power for our homes are measured in kilowatt hours, and that's what they measure to determine how much we pay for month. Your home's probably paying between $50 and $200 a month, depending on how many people live with you and how much electricity you're using. But these meters are what are read to figure out the kilowatt hours, the amount of power and time it's been used so that you can figure out how much you pay. The brightness of a bulb usually is dependent on solely the power that's dissipated. So, so if you look at an old school incandescent light bulb, a 60 watt light bulb versus an 80 watt light bulb, 80 watt light bulb is going to be much brighter because it's using more power. Compare a CFL light bulb, one of those twisty funky ones, uh, 60 watts versus 80 watts. Again, 80 watts is going to be much brighter because it's using more power. Right. If you take a look at this picture that we started with, if this is your resistance and this is your voltage and this is your current, you can see that resistance is going to slow down current while he's tying them up. But voltage is trying to speed along current and push it forward. So resistance and voltage work against each other. One helps current and one hurts current. A few pieces of information. If you shock someone, uh, you have a current of electricity flowing through you. If you have resistance going up, that's going to slow down your current. So if resistance goes down, opposite happens. Your current goes up. By the way, your skin, when it's dry, is quite resistant with up to 500,000 ohms. But with any type of moisture, sweat, moisture in the air, humidity, or water, your resistance drops dramatically, which means you can conduct electricity and get electrocuted quite easily. In fact, a current of only 7 milliamps for one second can kill you and stop your heart and stop your lungs. Also, did you notice that birds never get electrocuted um, uh, when they're on the high voltage power lines? That's because they're only on one wire. There's no potential difference, so electricity doesn't flow through. If you had a bird with a big enough wingspan that hit both sides, bzzz, that would totally take out the bird. And one last thing, just random tidbits of information.
That third prong on some types of plugs is a grounding plug. It actually acts to ground any electric extra charge so that you're not frying your circuit board. Thanks for listening, and we're going to go further into the math in our next lecture on how all these guys relate to each other mathematically.